Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number seven of our official series, where we watch the moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. And as always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. We're starting today, Friday at night on one of our more driven tracks, Takamaki. Here we got Turbo in the lead with Found Fresh. Uh, shout out to everyone that's been a part of this stream lately. Uh, and also, if you're watching this video, shout out to you guys. I've seen a lot more new people come in because of this series. I wasn't sure if it would be super fun, but it seems like a lot of people are enjoying it. I did this clip here. Wanted to show I I'm still a huge fan of these uh, day-night transitions. I mean, that sky is absolutely gorgeous. But here, we're just warming up. Not the craziest of lines. And also, we're going to have some really cool tracks. Uh, you Feel free to skip, like I mentioned earlier, to tracks that interest you. But there's some actually really cool tracks uh, on this video that I'm really excited to share and talk about. But you're just trying to like really warm up. I think this was a couple laps in. Wanted to show really what I guess my warm up looks like uh, in general. Turbo makes it pretty easy to capture the right lines. It's actually pretty nice following uh, consistent drivers like him. Fresh and uh, a reg who are pretty consistent helps you uh, really get those lines down well. So I'm just kind of keeping back a little bit. I'm thinking actively a little bit about my transitions. I also got some new lighting on the pedals. I'm not sure if you guys noticed. New pedal set as well. I think Moe's is sending me a clutch replacement spring from the last weekend. It was crazy, man. Uh, making that video last weekend uh, or last week was kind of rough. I mean, I just felt really... Uh, I don't know, maybe like not sad, but just kind of bumming a little bit. But this weekend was so fun. Uh, anyways, I guess we'll just talk about it and I'll let the video speak for itself. But yeah, I'm just kind of following the lines. Uh, I guess I really haven't talked much about Takamaki. I feel like there's not much to say because we've kind of beat it down a couple bit, uh, a little bit over the course of this series. But if you guys want maybe a little bit more of a conversation about the lines, uh, definitely let me know. Happy to do it. But now we are on Mihan, another track we, we've actually done a uh, little bit frequently. I really like this track here. I'm trying to keep proximity here with Reg in front of me. Really on that transition, trying to match it a little bit late. But really here, you'll see I'm going on the outside as much as I can, but staying close on Prox. Again, this track, I think, really challenges me to be consistent on my transitions and not late. There you can see an extremely late one, followed by another late one, and it kind of just adds on so i'm really trying to work on it when i get on mihan i think that's one of my biggest weaknesses but here i thought this clip would be really cool really big train turbo of course on the lead we also did a new uh vote that just started this week for the new set of cars and we also changed the colors so no more bright pink or purple cars <laughs> or corvettes i should say for turbo i feel like he was always in it somehow just happened to be that like that but we added the uh, S14, and I think we added one other car. But here, I'm just trying to really focus on when he's going to transition and transitioning on time. Still a little bit late, but you can see just between those two clips getting a little bit better. Now, we have driven on Brooklyn before, but man, was this crazy, dude. I mean, look at how big this train was. I think we actually accounted at one point. We had a 12 stack of a train. You know it's a big train when the track cam is missing the cars because I, I mentioned it before but i have a setting to try to help alleviate some of the performance issues especially when there are a lot of tracks on car uh cars on track so you'll see like the front ones you don't see on the track camera but i do see in my view so here i'm honestly not being too crazy not being too aggressive i saw a couple people behind me uh with a couple arrows here and there so i felt like there was probably a lot of people behind me looking at it there really isn't but I was just trying to be smooth, just trying to stay in the train as much as possible. This view in the mid sauce rear of a train, especially when people are killing it like this, is one of my favorite spots to be. So now we move, I'm actually in a third position. We got Unlimited and Reg in front of us. And again, I mean, watching this when I was editing it, the track cam looks so nice. This line I think speaks for itself. You just kind of want to run the outside this part I'm, I'm always trying to work on and adapt a little bit some people take it really far outside and then stay outside some people take it outside and then go a little bit midline i'm not really sure what the answer is i'm still kind of fishing around you can see me just trying to keep proximity with reg and, and unlimited 
almost a turbo because I'm so used to seeing him up front in a vet. But here, just trying to stick with it. I like to take that midline there too, the one that he took, or at least uh, I guess I took as well. Helps keep the momentum. Some people say that it's a little bit short and you should go a little bit longer outside, but I've noticed that it uh, kind of stutters the train a little bit harder than I'd like to. So a little bit of turbulence when you take it that. And then here really like no uh, crazy line focus for me. Right now I'm just focusing on proximity, trying to be uh, consistent on that. And then I thought it'd be really cool. Here's a, one of the S14s that got added having a night view. I don't think a lot of people have seen or driven Brooklyn Park with these day night cycles, but the nighttime is a really cool vibe. I know it's a little bit hard to see. You know, honestly, this is the view that I see and I think it's maybe uh, arguably realistic, right? Like this is probably what you would see. I definitely know IRL when I was on tracks that had poor lighting. It definitely felt like it needed a swivel spotlight, but Mon's doing a great job with his lead. A little bit of wavering there, but nothing too bad. Staying on the line. Here is right there on the outside. And then I like to pull it in. You can see I'm going a little bit more of an inside line than he did. Just to keep the, the train a little bit padded. I don't think his line is bad at all. I think that was just a decision that I made in that moment. And then when I see this, <clears throat> especially these two red arrows behind me, you know it's sweaty. I try to run that rail outside. I think I'm a little bit more shallow, especially when I feel or I think a lot of people are behind me. So maybe not as wide as I could have been, but man, I, I haven't really been like the biggest fan of Brooklyn Park. I wouldn't say I'm not a fan, but driving it with this many drivers was a blast. And then we followed that right up with Lime Rock. Always a fun track. You know I have a soft spot for this place. Here again, look at that track cam. I mean, that is just so cool. I really like how it's set up. So you can see these really, really wide sweepers. A little bit of stuttering that's uh, actually on the video. It was actually the way that the stream caught it. I was having some internet issues, which hopefully now moving forward should be all fixed. But yeah, again, staying in the middle of the pack, trying to not be too aggressive when I make mistakes, so, like you saw there, trying to stay back, not uh, choke up on it too much, just stay reserved and then slowly catch back up into it. And again, I'm thinking of the people behind me. If I try to catch up really quickly, it's going to accord in the train. So. Even when I make mistakes, you'll see like, oh man, there's a little bit of proximity. You could have pulled in a little bit more. I tried to just stay a little bit even kill here. Again, the track camera looking phenomenal. A little bit late again on my transitions. I think sometimes, dude, I'm just kind of vibing and this definitely looks like me just vibing right now. I think I was still uh, pretty ecstatic of how Brooklyn Park came out and, and driving it with everyone. So here was me just kind of enjoying being a part of the train can see not a bad size a little bit of mistake that i made there but trying to quickly recover and again here i'm like just staying a little bit back i kind of cushion that last corner a little bit on lime rock myself just because i feel like it helps a lot of people behind me too yeah it's so fun watching this back i, I honestly I, I always feel bad like anytime i pause it's just because i'm enjoying the view i wanted to add a little bit more night slash evening uh slash like uh, sunrise kind of views because it just looks so nice i mean the nighttime does get dark on some tracks for sure but i definitely feel like these transition points make it feel a lot more immersive and they're just visually fun to just like look at i guess along with like you know obviously the drifting but again just trying to stay consistent in my third position not trying to be too aggressive i definitely could be i definitely could be pushing a little bit more but my intention is just to be smooth for all the other drivers behind me, especially on these big trains. And then here is a night view. And again, the track cam looking so great. Me, they're right there. You saw me add a little bit of angle. I talked about that last series. That's going to kill you. I think that's one struggle that I'm still trying to iron out. So not adding an additional angle right before transition. Those of you that are saying, hey, man, I'm just struggling. Like, I feel like every time on a transition, I'm just so far behind. You really want to push and be kind of transitioning behind their car and not adding that additional uh, angle. I'll try to call it out next time I see it, but we're moving over now to Grange Motor Circuit. Now, I think I have quite a few clips of this. I don't think we've seen it on this series so far. However, this is one of the techniques that I've discussed before where I don't feel super confident with my lines. I did do a couple solo runs, but I just didn't feel like I was hitting the spots that I needed to. So thankfully, our friend Turbo 
put the training wheels on me and i'm just trying to follow his line and see what he's doing so you'll see like this isn't the cleanest drifting ever uh, you know it's nothing crazy but i am just trying to follow him and just trying to fill out where he's making his adjustments and what he's doing as far as the line goes also again i mean this i think this is probably a sunrise a little bit more like maybe a 10 a.m 11 a.m probably like a more like a 9 or 10. it just looks so nice i, I don't know maybe it's just me y'all to let me know guys like i'm not trying to glaze on the the graphics but it really looks good even watching back but let's talk about the lines now we should have a second run we're going to be following turbo i believe on the second run here so here going on the right side where that finish line slash uh, start line is then throwing it in going all the way outside i'm going a little bit shallow to catch in the proximity trying to stay on his door he goes all the way on the sweeper his right side to inside right here and then this is a really tricky one so you want to go outside and then i've seen this a couple different ways but sometimes i'll go inside like that and then you have to really extend i've seen some drivers not make any adjustments i think turbo made a little bit of an adjustment there but you really run that outside line the whole time this section i've struggled with sometimes i was e-braking i was trying to cut the habit because i felt like i was getting a little bit of taps in the back every time i did and then what's interesting is that section i looked at it irl they take it way wider but it does feel really weird i don't know if that's a power thing or or really like i don't know if i've seen like a, a train on grange irl like even a youtube video but it seems like those inside midlines feel the best for that like chicane section so here now we've done like kind of technically two like what i would consider a lead but a training wheel lead with uh turbo leading me kind of teaching me the lines again we have turbo up front reg and fresh behind him i'm just uh really just watching what they're doing seeing what their different lines are going to take i'm keeping an eye right here you're going to notice i'm keeping an eye actually on the uh one and two like lead cars i'm obviously watching fresh with my peripheral but i'm kind of watching what their lines are doing and then i'm going back and forth so i'm, I'm starting to see what they're doing how he's reacting really any information you can gain when you're in these situations on a newer track is really good and they're making a little bit of a mistake but just trying to keep that momentum forward so i don't have to fully reset i think those okay uh mistakes are okay especially when you don't have like a super stack train i would say this train is still pretty nice honestly but i don't have someone on the side of my door so i'm not sweating it too hard and then here is going to be our final run i think for grange again going outside there's a little bit past your left on that entry you can see all of them holding it wide right there and actually a little bit more untucked on the inside into this corner and again just like we talked about inside corner here and then this is what i was saying i sometimes i i was trying to cut it uh tight there to go outside and extend it out and i don't think it really worked i think obviously i went a little bit off track but here you can kind of see like what i've talked about like line fishing or line searching like i'm just trying to see what makes the most sense uh, what feels the best to my car and then also studying what they're doing and, and how they're kind of driving because all these things like I, I feel like trains definitely put you in a very hard spot where you have to learn and you have to figure it out right then and there you know it's a lot more pressure so maybe it helps accelerate your learning a little bit but now we are starting out we are switching to I should say Saturday on Shadow Valley Reg throwing a phenomenal lead and another more like sunrise uh, maybe this is actually an evening uh, sunset you can kind of see the shadows if you really pay attention you know actually see them move because of our uh cycle here just holding his door trying to have consistent proximity i've seen a lot of people where they're gonna be like inside their door but the way that they do that is they go really shallow i try to think about it again i'm chasing this lead car but i'm also in my own way a lead car for the guy behind me so i'm really trying to focus on matching his angle and not just crunching his door right time and place kind of thing but i feel like that's a lot smoother for people following me behind and then here we have a night clip from shadow valley really fun track at night has a really cool vibe to it but this section is insane especially on lead it is completely dark i mean we say shadow valley there it is right there in that corner reg doing a great job on his lines basically the line i would take here you can kind of go for that concrete outside and then here you can either go a little bit outside of that white line or inside or even on it it really depends hugging the inside corner there again losing a little bit of proximity but trying to really stay consistent and smooth for those behind me you can see two arrows in front two arrows behind makes you really sweaty so i try to be consistent but now we move over 
to Ebisu School Course. Now, a little maybe not known fact, this was actually my first time uh, meeting the OTM crew. I think Turbo and Robot, shout out to both of you guys. The first guys that I ever met from the OTM crew helped transition me from Gravy Garage to WTS. And then uh, here actually was Swarm. I think actually DWG and then Swarm technically. But let's talk about these lines. So here on this entry, I was doing a little bit of e-braking and see, but you can look behind at that track cam. And even if you replay it a little bit to previously, you could see it kind of uh, it might be a little bit too much of an aggressive stop. And then here all the way outside if I can, and then all the way outside if I can here, tapping, sorry, excuse me, the wall just slightly. And then let's talk about this one more time. We're gonna be looking for this entry, a little bit of e-brake, try not to be too hard. You can see a little bit of a slam in from the second car behind me. I think that's reg. So I'm not too sure. Now the on on paper, you're supposed to go to that right course, but this line just feels so good. This line that we're all taking. This track is really like a very like similar to clutch kickers, where it's very replayable, really fun to just kind of zone in and work on maybe some of your proximity or just lines or, or things like that. I would actually genuinely recommend, not just because of the name, but for anyone that's starting to maybe learn or trying to work on things, this is a very, very beginner friendly track with a couple things that can be a little bit of a, maybe a skill check or a challenge, right? What are those spots? Here we have our entry, working on that. How can I enter without an e-brake? How can I enter with an e-brake? Running this whole outside line is kind of foreign sometimes. This part, I mean, that's just kind of a normal transition. And then this going on the outside, if I wasn't chasing on the outside wall to outside wall, all the way to the outside here making a little bit of a mistake but trying to stay in the train you can see was able to recover not mess up too many people and then we're back at it this is a very engaging track and also it's great if you're trying to practice maybe your donuts or your figure eights there's a couple of little spots that you can practice and it kind of gives you some guide rails to to know or to to work on hey i want to do big circles or little circles again i know i'm like pushing this track really hard but I really do like this track, and I think it's a great one for, for anyone out there trying to learn or, or improve. Shout out to Perma for making these tracks. Always such a good job with these tracks. Great optimization, and visually just looks so good. I don't think I included a night clip on here, but it's a very fun track. Now, this is a brand new track. Shout out to BHS. Now, you've seen a lot of us, uh, well, you've seen a lot of clips, I think, on the series with the BHS Drift Playground. Now, this was formerly called something else. I, I wish I put it in my notes here, but it is now called officially Drift Track by the Old Tree by BHS. This was the beta that was a public release before it was the official version. There's not too much change. Arguably though, I haven't actually driven the new one yet because it released earlier this week on its 1.0 versus I think this is a 0.9 release. But let's talk about the lines. This is a really interesting track i think i really have a uh i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna say like an attraction but i seem to gravitate towards these long sweeping like fun um not maybe not fun but i think they're fun long sweeping tracks let's talk about it so here in the chicane trying to throw a late angle sometimes i was throwing a little bit too much but here you want to run the outside now this part you can take a little bit how you want i think this part right here taking on the inside getting a little bit of a jump action and then here I was kind of going like inside. I was really messing with these lines a little bit. The gearing, because I like to drive in one gear when I can, I hope none of you guys are eye rolling too hard, but because I do that, there is a little bit of a limitation here. You can see I'm fully on the throttle, fully on the rev limiter, basically, trying to keep on speed. I think you're going to see it with a chase, with me chasing turbo uh, in a couple next clips, uh, having a little bit of struggle because of that self pose limitation. I'm not sure if I'd say necessarily be like me, but that's just one of my choices. And because I explained all that, I haven't explained the, the lines. So let's look at this next clip and let's try to just focus. I'll try my hardest to focus on these lines uh, just so we can kind of talk about it a little bit. So here in this transition point, going to the chicanes, should be seeing boom. We have Turbo in the lead now. Now his lines are basically the same, probably a little bit modified better. So him going here on the inside, just as I was, Losing a little bit of momentum, getting a little bit of uh, turbulence in the train, but able to pick it up, no problem. Now, I'm just trying to keep consistent with him. Here you can see him pulling away. I think this is because of my gear change, but I'm trying to keep as much proximity as I can, not trying to 
pull too much angle. I do feel a little shallow when I'm driving, but actually watching back doesn't look too bad. Now here, if you take the inside line, instead of doing a manji, go into the outside here on this little like concrete thing, drop a little bit of tire into the pool, keeping on this little shallow line here. And then here I've done it both ways. Here you can see turbo going the outside. I've gone inside to, or sorry, inside to outside. And then same for this part. He goes more on the outside. I like to take it on the inside, this outside section. And then this part, a little chicane dropping tire by accident, wouldn't recommend that. And then here, I think the biggest thing is if you're going to throw angle into these chicanes, I was watching back a couple clips. I was throwing a little bit too much of an aggressive angle, like way too much of an aggressive angle. A little bit of lag there uh, on the server, I think, or, or maybe it was turbo, but still trying to keep that uh, proximity, especially because I think uh, at the time I knew there was a couple people behind me. Here, going a little bit shallow, it felt, sh it felt shallow to me, but again, watching it, maybe it actually wasn't as shallow as I thought it was. I think BHS did a great job with the uh, the track cams. I think the track cams, maybe for the older tracks, aren't really done. Uh, and if they are done, they're not really like super engaging, but I thought that they did a really good job on these. So again, inside to this like middle, not fully outside line here, he's adjusting it. I mean, this was a new track for all of us. So I thought it'd be cool to see a little bit more clips. Well, in general, I'll try to do four. Uh, two leads, two chases on tracks that we haven't seen or seen in a while. But yeah, I really genuinely had it so much fun on that track. We, I think, all had so much fun on that track that we then were like, you know what? Let's go to the other BHS uh, track. Kind of the same concept, but a little bit different. So we featured this, I think, quite a few times here. There were some really cool moments on this. I just thought that it would be cool. Show Yasko throwing a really good lead. I think he's had a decent amount of time on this track. I'm just trying to match his transition timing and what he's doing. And one thing on this track that I really try to focus on here, I'm going to be kind of wide open. And then you really want to throw it in. He did a good job there. I was a little bit soft on my transition. Getting that inside zone and watching his transition timing. Try not to lose any of my momentum. Sometimes I've noticed I've gone a little bit wide and you're going to lose people in this section right here. It's very fast the transition to this outside zone i'm really trying to work on myself fill it, uh filling out that whole section and then this part is kind of tricky you got to scrub a lot of speed without scrubbing too much speed and it's a really crazy inside zone there i just wanted to show like a good recovery from yasko picking it up no problem and i think we have one more run here it is we got dbs shout out to him in the yellow corvette I don't think I've driven a ton with him on this track, and I haven't seen him, I think, in the vet until now. But again, trying to stay close to his door. I'm a little bit slower on transitions. I just think there was a little bit of uncertainty of, like, I wasn't quite sure how he'd be driving, especially with a different car that I'm used to seeing him in. And I don't think I've driven this track with him either. So this is me taking a little bit less of an aggressive approach but just trying to be uh, on his door. There, I think though, again, you know, you can really, if you have the momentum and speed, you can really throw that into that, uh, I guess like a manji into the outside to inside zone. But here, just kind of vibing. Also, if you guys have any like weird stuttering issues on BHS, I, I've noticed like after maybe like 20, 30 minutes, sometimes that happens to me. If you just leave and then rejoin, if you're on a server that's running it, Typically fixes it up, no problem. I, I don't know really why that is. I don't know if it's the spectators or what. It seems like around this area is like really rough, but if you guys are having that issue, maybe that helps someone out there. So now we switch to a pretty insane track. Now, to my understanding, this is a IRL track called Spirits Peaks. We've driven on Takamaki, which is pretty bumpy. We've driven on actually a Red Rock port from CarX to Aceto which is also very bumpy. I think this actually takes the cake of the bumpiness. Now, some people would consider this uh, a terrible track. I personally consider it just a challenge. It's something a little bit different, actually a lot different. And the reason why it's different is these bumps, if you don't hit them correctly, if you're not in the right angle, they will eliminate you quickly. And you can see me making a decent amount of mistakes because of it. I think this was uh, only after a couple I don't, not a couple, maybe like, you know, 10, 15 minutes on the track, got into daytime. But let's talk about the lines that I was looking for. Outside zone, 
to this outside zone. Some people were throwing this in crazy, but I'm trying to take a line that would make sense for a train. That's always my focus. Taking more of a mid inside line. You can see me making a little bit of a mistake with the transition, but it's really the bumps. Here, I really do kind of feel like I... Like, watching this even again, I like, I'm not super comfortable with these lines that I'm taking necessarily. I'm really trying to fight these bumps. But every line I'm taking right here, I'm just trying to think what would make the most sense for the train? What's going to continue my momentum forward? Here, a big sweeper, and then this is kind of a quick inside cut. They're trying to extend it, not cut it too hard. Again, making a couple mistakes just because of the bumpiness. I think maybe I could have messed with the suspension, but I'm not really that smart when it comes to it, to be honest with you. So I'm just kind of leaving it stock and seeing how it goes, and here we are, right? So now we have... Uh, OTM Turbo and OTM Professor on the lead. You'll see, I think they take a little bit similar lines. I think uh, Turbo is a little bit more aggressive on that entry. They're making a big mistake. You can see an absolute mad gap getting created because of that. And then uh, also the people behind me having a little bit of turbulence because of my mistake. Here really was trying to, again, think about the train lines, but they took a lot wider of a line than I was expecting. So I made a, a big mistake. But I wanted to show like how tough this course really is. I, I mean, not that I had like any like perfect tri uh, lines or you know any runs. Honestly, I, like even looking through it, I didn't see anything super crazy. But here I'm just trying to keep up, and definitely like you can see, I felt some pressure. Two arrows in front, two arrows or red arrows in back. I knew there was a lot of people behind me. My whole thought was just like, hey, "Amen, don't mess up, don't make too many uh, big mistakes. Try to keep up with these guys." Here's the same run. It's just like a, a continuation. So I didn't switch it. Wanted to show you guys again what kind of lines they're taking. Turbo going outside. And you can actually see there was not a lot of momentum loss on that part. It actually looks pretty decent. Outside here a little bit. I think it goes to a inside mid. mid okay, mid, fully mid line to like an outside line. Not too bad. I think we're all kind of looking a little shaky, man. All of us are looking like it's our first time in a seto, but dude, I swear, if you want to try it, bro, like, uh, Spirit Peaks is crazy. I mean, it genuinely is crazy. Fun track, though. Really fun track. I think it's something a lot new, uh, a lot newer and a new challenge that maybe a lot of us as drivers on a seto haven't really experienced. A lot more of our tracks are typically paved. Nice and smooth, right? Some of them. I think most of them. Most of them. But yeah, interesting track. I don't know if I would be saying that that's a top contender for me. But we now switch to DMAF HPD. Now, why I didn't give it the full name for my notes, I'm not too sure. But this is a real track. I think Lone Star, it's actually in Texas. Lone Star has held some competitions from it. Now, finding this track was really hard. I, I really wish I would have put in my notes who put us onto this track, but they mentioned uh, that this track existed and they were able to give it to us and we were able to drive it. I'm so sorry if you're watching, bro. Like, I genuinely don't remember my bad. I just know that I actually am really appreciative because it was really interesting. Now, this track was a love it or hate it track for sure. Here you have this big outside sweeper to a little bit of a manji action to this right-hander where you want to go kind of outside. And then to this corner, you can see all of us kind of like really trying to learn this track. It's, it's really small. It's one of those tracks where you have to make it work for you. And I think this part is really unique. Where you go really high speed, scrub a lot of uh, a lot of speed, throw a lot of angle, and then boom, you're back into it all over again. But here was a little bit more of a cohesive run for me anyway. Following here, we got fresh turbo and reg the normal suspects and the red, white, and blue got it to USA <laughs> colors, dude. Uh, I, it just happened that way, guys. I don't know, but yeah, we're just trying to follow them, trying to learn the lines. I'm making a ton of mistakes, as you can see. And you can kind of probably notice, like, watching, if, especially if you've been watching the series, how un unconfident I feel. Maybe it looks, I think, even watching it back with you guys right now, it does feel like I was not super confident. And then here was one of the later runs where I was actually gaining a little bit more confidence, trying to run the same lines, trying to stick with turbo here, getting the transition timing a little bit late, a little bit awkward there. You can see the car not really having a good subtle point, tapping this car in every spot possible, it looks like. And then uh, trying to just be, again, consistent, but it was, it was a little bit hard here taking an inside line. Some people were going outside and then really trying to run the edge of the track into this corner. 
And then there you go again. There's a loop. Pretty interesting track. Again, love it or hate it. I don't know what camp I fall on, but it was funny to see some people having really heavy opinions. I thought, honestly, I thought people would be like, oh, this track sucks. But someone said, this track has everything, bro. <laughs> so take that as you will, man. But now we switch to B Bahuku Highland. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, now, I apologize for the track camera. I didn't realize it wasn't set up properly. But here, what I was told by OTM Professor is the whole point of the track is do you want to have crazy uh, backies, like some rear... Mm, I'm not sure what I was going to go with that. But you want to just throw in the rear super heavy. You're going to see it, I think, on this clip right here. Straighten up a little bit. Go to the south side section. And then really just try to yeet it, delete us. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I cut it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But you really try to have to yeet it and the rest of the track is just there to just reset up in the corner. I'm so sorry. I swear I had one more entry in there. But this is the same track, but a different part of it. This is the only part I knew up until the this weekend, actually. It's a really challenging course. It's a pretty fun course. It does feel like I... I don't know if it's me, probably just me, but I felt like I didn't have like any grip. Could have been just how I was driving, but going from the other course to this one felt pretty crazy to me. But here, entry way late, but kind of running this outside. You can see them doing a lot better job than I was running that outside line. Then you take it to this mid or sorry, inside to outside. And then this spot, I know I shouldn't be hitting the e-brake. I was trying not to there. You could see I was really trying not to, and then I felt like I had to. And then this part, a really, really narrow uh, uh, street, I guess, or track piece. And then there, I forget the other track that we've ran, but it has that like crazy hairpin of a corner. And then here's kind of more of a lofty. It still feels like really tight, those corners right there. I don't really have a ton of feedback on like what the line should be because I'm still learning it myself. But now we go to another track that maybe you guys know about. I haven't drifted it a ton. Last time we tried to drift it, I was... I don't know why. I mean, this is just the truth. We had the weather set to hurricane, max rain at night. I think I was on WTS. Uh, it was a nightmare. And I didn't know that most people split this track into two sections. So we're in the section that is defined as like basically the beginner section. So I definitely understand it. And it was kind of funny to, to be in the section watching this other side, which is the intermediate section, kill it. It made me want to get better in this section to join them over there. So here we go over the hill to kind of really have to struggle to extend that. But you can. I've seen people do it. I'm just not great at it. Here to this outside zone. I typically go on this inside corner to that outside. Again, an inside, I think, to this outside section. Ride that out. Again, another inside, like a double inside to an outside there. I think, wait, maybe this inside. Inside here little manji action and then this you can run outside i think i was running it more inside but i think you can run it a little bit maybe mid outside line and then right there you can see everyone there on the intermediate track and i said you know what i gotta i gotta force myself now this track is or this section of the full track is pretty intense i was gonna say insane intense kind of same thing here i'm just trying to stay right behind manji you have to really throw it in and trust your car you're on an uphill i was even finding a little bit of success with an e-brake I don't know if that's going to work with more of a cohere, uh, coherent train, but that's what felt okay to me. And then this part on the inside, then you go to the outside. I'm losing a lot of proximity uh, to mods because I'm struggling with the lines. Really late on these transitions. This inside blind corner, another transition here, and then you should be able to run this outside section. So let's talk about it a little bit more coherently. Just trying to stay right behind him. You want to enter right about right where he did big angle going up the hill because you're kind of scrubbing some speed going up blind to this outside zone really can run it either mid i think you can run it inside mid or outside i think mid and outside feel the best then outside to that concrete barrier to the inside corner here to the sweeper staying inside and this was really hard for me because i wasn't understanding the track but then i think it goes to inside and for those of you that may not know, I did not know this. Shout out to Turbo. He showed me before, but I thought it'd be cool to include. This track is actually on uh, US Airway. Have I said what the track name? But yeah, this is US Airway. And uh, yeah, this is a hidden track out there. If you guys are interested in knowing how to get there, let me know. 
maybe some of you guys are going to be nice enough and comment it uh, in the description, or sorry, in the comments. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see what you guys do. I'm not, I'm not gate keeping it. If anyone's curious, definitely ask me in the comments. I'm happy to tell you. But shout out to Turbo. I didn't know this existed. It's a pretty cool little Easter egg. You can see my uh, track camera doesn't work out here, but it'd be like that in the uh, what are they called? The back row. Uh, but anyway, we're now on Minami Chiba, our final. I think that's how you pronounce that track of our weekend session. I feel like we rolled through this so fast that. I always feel like the the more uh, enjoyable that the clips are to watch and just uh, relive the weekend, it's always like, oh man, I feel like I didn't have enough commentary. But let's talk about the lines. Now, this is something I'm still trying to learn. This is a very fun track. It's a little bit technical. So here it seemed like, right here is what I would consider maybe the start of the track. So here, you kind of want to run this outside line. I've seen a little bit more people go midline, which I think might be the better decision. Here you really want to trust your car, throw it in, run this outside line. That actually wasn't terrible. I was struggling a little bit, going too shallow. Here, kind of to the inside line, where that cone is actually. And now that I think about it, those cones might be there to indicate where you should be. Imagine that. But then here, this part too is kind of challenging. You want to go outside, but not too far. Make sure you're carrying that momentum into that part. But now we actually go into our train situation. We have turbo in front reg and then f mods i guess it's fv mods but i would say i would say f mods or mods i guess that's just me but here i was trying really hard to be a lot better about not going super shallow on that corner every time we talk about hairpin corners i've noticed i go way too shallow and it leaves no room for anyone to chase me so i was really trying to work on that part and then this part too i was fishing for lines a little bit you can see a little bit of turbulence in the train because of that section but here again, we're going to be seeing this outside uh, line. Yeah, I think he cuts it in pretty heavy there. Look at that, how how crazy turbo goes in there. And again, a big entry. It, this corner does feel better if you kind of huck it in. Like if, if you, um, just because it's YouTube, I'm not going to use that word. But if you light foot it, you know what I mean? Uh, into that section, it doesn't feel as good as if you are confidently throwing it in and really getting a lot of angle. And it looks cooler too, man. And it looks cooler. That line looks a lot better. You can see it, not really much turbulence, if any, there. And then here, we're really just kind of following mods. It's not the greatest line, or sorry, the chase or proximity. Again, I'm still just trying to trying to fill it out, trying not to make too many mistakes. Here you can see a little bit of turbulence again, but this is what we talked about before. Like if you've driven with people before in the lobby, if you feel confident in yourself, you can kind of like work through it instead of just a complete reset. But if you're like, hey, I'm really not sure, always better to err on the side of caution just do a reset but i left a little bit on here uh a little bit of extra just because it's a really fun track to watch i definitely would like to come back here and level up a little bit it's a little bit weak for me but i really do enjoy for some reason as you know i've talked about these big flowy tracks but these smaller like hot lab tracks are very fun too and these parts that like really have a, a little bit of a technical check where like, like, what does that mean, right? So we have this outside zone that you run out, and then this section here where you have a lot of line choices, but only a couple good line choices that you can make to really maintain momentum, especially in a train situation. And then going to that hairpin corner, maybe not a hairpin corner, but where you have to really throw it in backwards. I kind of like those elements. It, it challenges you a lot. But yeah, man, I mean, that we've we blasted through that. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, number seven of the series. And I sincerely want to give, if you made it this far and really in general to everyone, thank you so much for being a part of the servers. Thank you so much for being a part of the streams. It genuinely makes it so much more fun. Also, a massive shout out to those of you that are coming from YouTube, joining in the lobbies. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you guys. Thank you for taking the time. I hope that this video inspires you. I hope that you guys join in if you're not maybe you know confident come be confident with us we'll help you level up help me level up we all you know level up together thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will see you guys on the next one later